Welcome back to the Ancient Tree Research Project. This is part two for the giant cedars of Lebanon. If you have not watched part one, please do so when you can. Then this video will make a little bit more sense. My name is ODD, and I am one out of a growing population of people that believe that many of the buttes and mesas that we see used to actually be giant trees, but now they are just remnants of what they once were. You can find these ancient tree stumps all over the earth, we have Ben Bulbin in Ireland. Jagertha Tableland in Tunisia. Mount Connor in Australia, also known as the Crimson Plateau. Mount Garfield here in Colorado, where I live, which is the New World Order headquarters for North America. Uh, check out a video called The Colorado Conspiracy for more on that. Next, we have the Superstition Mountains in Arizona. Table Mountain in South Africa. Los Organos in the Canary Islands. This one has basalt columns like the Devil's Tower. And in Venezuela, there are many. Cucanon Tapui. Mount Roraima. Cerro Atana, or Atana Mountain, just to name a couple. And what's really cool about Cerro Atana is that the native people here, the Piaroa, have a rich oral tradition for their mythology, and that includes Cerro Atana as once being the tree of life. Here on the wiki for Cerro Atana, we read, for the Piaroa Indians, the original inhabitants of the area, Atana is a sacred mountain. It is Kueme Yoho, the stump of the sacred tree of the fruits of the world. Piaroan mythology tells how the treetop went as high as the infinite, and its branches were full of fruits which fell and gave life to the Amazon. One day, Wahari and his nephew, which had been transformed into a Lapa, cut down the tree to get all the fruits at once. Speaking of cutting down trees, chapter 66 in the Book of Enoch explains who cut these giants down. In those days, the word of God came to me and said, Noah, behold thy lot has ascended up to me, a lot void of crime, a lot beloved and upright. Now then shall the angels labor at the trees, labor at the trees. But when they proceed to this, I will put my hand upon it and preserve it. The seed of life shall arise from it, and a change shall take place, that the dry land may not be left empty. I will establish thy seed before me for ever and ever, and the seed of those who dwell with thee on the surface of the earth. It shall be blessed and multiplied in the presence of the earth, in the name of the Lord. Specifically, angels labored at the trees translates to Nephilim cut down the trees. And then God stepped in to preserve the seed, which is why we still have trees. Granted, they are no longer the humongous size that they once were. Also, another interesting thing that I found comes from a book called Patriarchs and Prophets by Ellen G. White. In chapter 7, The Flood, it says this, In the days of Noah, a double curse was resting upon the earth in consequence of Adam's transgression and of the murder committed by Cain. Yet this had not greatly changed the face of nature. There were evident tokens of decay, but the earth was still rich and beautiful in the gifts of God's providence. The hills were crowned with majestic trees, supporting the fruit-laden branches of the vine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the vast garden-like plains were clothed with verdure and sweet with the fragrance of a thousand flowers. 
The fruits of the earth were in great variety and almost without limit. Mmm, yummy. The trees far surpassed in size, beauty, and perfect proportion any now to be found. Their wood was of fine grain and hard substance closely resembling stone, and hardly less enduring. Gold, silver, and precious stones existed in abundance. So you hear that? The trees far surpassed in size, beauty, and perfect proportion any now to be found. That just means that the trees were way bigger back then. Their wood was of fine grain and hard substance, closely resembling stone. Oh, hey, there's Rosette. What's up, Rosette? Mahalo, DD. Now, part of Shadi's trip to Lebanon was sitting with monks and hermits and learning a lot about the history of the land and cultures from Islam to Christianity, right down to the secrets of Freemasonry. He was able to view two Masonic books, one blue and one red. Blue represents space, red represents time. Red is the compass or come to pass, representing the flow of time. It makes the circles and circles roll like time flows. Blue represents space or the square, that which is stable and can be measured by a ruler. The York Rite of Masonry seems to control space, the Scottish Rite, the time and the flow of blood, meaning the people through controlling information like media, schools, and control the flood of blood also through alchemy with drugs, food additives, chemtrailing, fluorides, vaccines, etc. The Knights Templar wore a red cross because they represent the Knights of the Temp or Time, Plars or Pillars, or Jackin and Boaz. Temp is Time, P-L-A-R-S is Pillars or the Time Pillars, the Templars. They are the keepers of the time or the knowledge collected through the time of man. They are the priests that rule over the knowledge. They control the churches, religions, law, science, media, medicines, and transportation. The blue cross of the Templars are the space keepers. They deal with commerce, trade, money, and regional influences like countries. They are the monarchs. They are the rulers or that which measure and decides the value. They are the rulers that maintain the status quo. They are the rule keepers. The law, T-H-E-L-A-W, or switch the letters around and have W-E-A-L-T-H, or wealth. Those things outside of time, but possessed by time. The blue bloods, the men in blue, or the police, the military, the protectors of the space that the Masons seem to believe they somehow own through their creation of a completely false paradigm of information and force used to enslave the cow and profane. Yeah, right. This also relates to the insurance company called the Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and those who deal with the emergencies or time-related issues are the Blue Cross. The Red Crosses we see on ambulances and such are because time is of the essence in a hospital or ambulance. Red Cross takes the blood through donation, regulates the emergencies, and are out in the active physical environment dealing with people, drugs, vaccines, and medicines or alchemy. The Blue Cross regu- uh, regulates space, related issues such as insurance to cover all space as it might be needed and issues dealing with money. Notice this one is blue. Now listen to what is written in Night Kadosh, the same chapter we recited in part one about the blue degrees. The blue degrees are but the outer court or portico of the temple. Part of the symbols are displayed there to the initiate, but he is intentionally misled by false interpretations. It is not intended that he shall understand them, but it is intended that he shall imagine that he understands them. Their true explication is reserved for the adepts, the princes of masonry. The whole body of the royal and sacerdotal art was hidden so carefully centuries since in the high degrees 
as that is even yet impossible to solve many of the enigmas which they contain. It is well enough for the mass of those called Masons to imagine that all is contained in the blue degrees and whose attempts to undeceive them will labor in vain and without any true reward violate his obligations as an adept. So the blue book represents the outer portico of the temple while the red book represents the inner portico. The initiate learns of the outer portico while the master mason knows the inner portico, the true secrets. Like Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma, which is a red book, right? So he's a master mason. He knows the inner portico. Pike's great work, his magnum opus, his red book. Carl Jung wrote a book he called The Red Book, and that is his book of enlightenment, going through the colors of alchemy, black, white, yellow, red, in that order. Jung started with his black book, now is the red book the mason's book of enlightenment their book of alchemy from the wiki the magnum opus alchemy it originally had four stages negrito a blackening or melanosis albedo a whitening or leucosis citrinitas a yellowing or xanosis, rubido, a reddening, purpling or iosis. Notice purpling, like the Phoenician purple. So the red book was Young's magnum opus, his great work. The giant cedar shows up in the red Masonic book written in Arabic, the language of Lebanon. So let's look at this picture in the red Masonic book written by Antoine Asse, pronounced Ause, an Arabic surname that Shadi got to look at. Now you will say that's not a cedar, but I beg to differ. Let's examine more closely. Now credit to Cracker for spotting what this tree really is. The leaves of the tree coming out of the king while he is dreaming is a mimosa. Mimosa is the tree that DMT is derived from. DMT, code for dream time which is exactly what you do when you smoke DMT. You basically have the most intense, vivid dream while you are awake. And in Carl Jung's red book, he speaks on dreams and the mind and how we are all connected through group consciousness. Did he take DMT? Acacia and mimosa tree species are very closely related. They both contain extractable DMT through different methods. The acacia acts more as an active ingredient to ayahuasca brew. The ayahuasca is the female energy or the MAOI. Notice the reference to MOAI like the statues on Easter Island or the Moai, which many of the statues look to be female and have breast. And the chakruna leaf is the male energy part of the ayahuasca brew containing the active DMT. This means that the ayahuasca brew could be produced regionally depending on the plant species available. And here's how it would work. The ayahuasca vine could easily be replaced with Syrian root seed extract, which is made by boiling the seeds in acidic liquid or lemon juice or vinegar. The DMT could be extracted through similar methods from the acacia or the mimosa tree. 
Several species of acacia tree are common to the Middle East. Acacia is considered sacred in those lands, it seems. Shadi would know more about this since he actually lives there and knows the traditions truthfully and without biased information. The picture's caption in Arabic reads, The head will reach the sky like Babel Tower. No king can defeat it. Well, when you are on DMT, the DMT is in control, not you. So no king could defeat it. It will take you to the sky, to dreamland, to another dimension. The verses in 1 Corinthians 1 relate to this. The foolishness of God are those things which are undefined, containing all possibility. It is greater than that which is defined. Its potential is greater. When you do DMT, you see things that language is not capable of replicating in a reasonable way. That's why people are at a loss for words when they do it, because no words are capable of describing it. Those undefined tachyon waveforms are uncollapsed quantum potential existing outside of the limitations of time, space, and matter. What we experience are the possibilities we see changing as a flow of undefined information in a realm without limitation when we are in the DMT state. You can see how these verses speak of this that no flesh shall glory in his presence. Ego is not something you want to cling to when you're in a DMT state, nor are those things that are defined by authority of man. Since this realm is one that is not limited by time, space, and matter, no king can rule over it. Rulers define, and that is something that no ruler could measure, define, control, nor put into words sufficiently. And this is 1 Corinthians 1, verse 25. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, nobel, are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty or think they're mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. We discussed this, ODD, Shadi, Cracker, and I, how there is a concerted effort to stigmatize all drugs as bad. Just say no to drugs is the common slogan, but not all are bad. Yes, PCP is bad. Yes, heroin is bad. Xanax, uppers, downers, etc. But DMT is a natural element found in all life. It has many positive applications from breaking people's addictions to having mind-blowing epiphanies about how the world truly is. From Matthew 6.22 The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Christ is talking about the pineal gland here. From an article by the Event Chronicle, The pineal gland develops from the roof of the dicephalon, a section in your brain. Although it looks like a pine cone, when cut open it is very similar to an eye. Even more fascinating is that the interior of the pineal gland actually has retinal tissue composed of rods and cones inside its interior lining, which are wired into the visual cortex in the brain. The photoreceptors of the retina strongly resemble the cells of the pineal gland. It even has vitreous fluid in it like an eye does, and it still functions as a light receptor in some vertebrates. In many cultures, it is spiritually referred to as the third eye, and science seems to agree. Besides regulating sleep patterns and sexual development, 
Many researchers believe that it has the ability to connect us to other dimensions like the dream world, spiritual realms such as deep meditation and astral travel, and during near-death experiences through the release of DMT. Dimethyltryptamine is a psychedelic compound of the tryptamine family. It occurs naturally in trace amounts in mammals where it functions as a neurotransmitter and is also produced in humans. However, its purpose in the brain remains in debate. French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes, dedicating much time to the study of the pineal gland, called it the principal seat of the soul. He believed it to be the point of connection between the intellect and the body. It appears that the gland is the only section of the brain to exist as a single part rather than one half of a pair. The gland is thought to be highly active during dreaming, meditation, and spiritual experiences. Did you get that? Single part. Let thine eye be single, and the whole body shall be full of light. Matthew 6.22 He is talking about the pineal gland, which is represented by the pine cone, and is in the courtyard of the Vatican. They obviously know its importance. So by calcifying ours with fluoride, ours will not become single. Notice the two peacocks here. Peacocks have the all-seeing eye represented in their feathers. In addition, they have experienced DMT and share it with us. Truth in plain sight once again. Just like they hide the giant trees, they hide DMT. For example, how do you think cartoons first came into our existence? We don't see anything in our reality, in our day-to-day -day lives, that even remotely look like a cartoon. So how did the first cartoon come about? Well, I can tell you it most likely came about by a DMT experience. Because in there, that is the only place where you actually experience a cartoon world. And they hide the experience in film as well. Take The Matrix, for instance. Buckle your seatbelt, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye, says Cypher. How do you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? says Neo. It makes you feel cold. You hear strange noises. And then... You're in another state of existence. Back to the Masonic drawing, we notice there is a ring around the tree. In Serbia, Russia, there are supposedly mysterious ringing cedars ancient trees that over the course of 550 years had reportedly accumulated so much energy through their pine needles and tenna like leaves that they had begun to audibly ring or vibrate. You can do experiments where you can measure the ohms in a tree and they do emit electrical current. The ringing is also a specific feature of a DMT trip. You hear loud ringing right at the start of it. The closest thing people relate it to are the Tibetan singing bowls. Did the Tibetan monks do DMT? What is also remarkable is the connection between Australia and Lebanon. Do we mention yet that Shadi lives in Australia, but is from Lebanon? We have the DMT from Lebanon, and we have the dream time of the Aborigines. The Ab, God, origins from Australia. Dream time, D, 
R E A M T I M E. So we have D M T encoded in the word dream time. And in Aborigines, we have Ab, which is another word for God, and Origines or Origins, God's original people. The Masons know the importance of Ab. They use it in their most infamous saying, Ordo Ab Chao, which they say means order out of chaos. But have you ever looked closely at this verse? That message is for the profane. This is what I believe is the message for the adepts. Ordo Ab Chao should be written pyramid style. So the AB would be at the capstone, flanked by Ordo on the right and Chao on the left. Now remember, when we say on the right, the view is always from the object facing outwards. So Ordo would come first when we read this phrase. Ordo is order. It is what you have when you follow the right hand path. It is on the right. Chao is on the left for the left hand path the path of chaos and destruction. Now both Ordo and Chao have four letters each and are on the same level. So for the Masons, they see the two states as equal. One represents Christ, Ordo, and one represents Lucifer, Chao. The Ab at the top is the prime creator. To them, he is both male and female, represented by the A for Alpha and the B for Beta, like Adam, male, and Eve, female. So their androgynous God at the top. Read the writings of Manly P. Hall, honorary 33rd degree Mason, for more on this. Notice 16 stars on the right. 16 stars on the left, together equal 32, with the 33rd star as the capstone. 16's digital root is 7, 1 plus 6 equals 7, so you have the 77 code in the stars. 77 is code for Lucifer and Satan. Lucifer is represented by the White Pope and Satan is represented by the Black Pope, their two-headed Janus God, depicted here in the double-headed eagle. The Templar cross over the crown shows they are in control of the crown, both temporal and spiritual power. They hold both keys to this world. God is my right, written in Latin below meaning they believe it is their right, their might, to become like gods. That is the whole goal of the great work, to usurp God and become gods in their own right. It is also a play on the word right, because right in God is my right is implying Christ. Christ is God's right-hand man. So they use the alternate meaning of right to usurp Christ. If you take a closer look at Devil's Tower, you will notice it's been stripped of its external bark. For centuries, Aboriginal, African and Native Indians used trees as well as plants to make medicine using bark, branches and leaves to cure all their sicknesses. Things like adjusting their body temperature to cold were essential as clothing wasn't a thing. Just as sacred as marijuana is on healing cancers and disease, every plant and tree on earth has the potential to heal the human body. Like all natural life forms, people and plants all start off in darkness, whether it's in the soil or in the womb. 
with the right water, nutrients, sunlight and chemistry, they all become their own beings or creators. So where does the human body get the chemical or the ingredients from? From the sun, the moon and the stars. In the Bible it says, the stars, let them be for signs and seasons. The stars and their corresponding elements are found on the periodic chart. This is why certain plants and animals are found in one area of the world and other species are found elsewhere. The environment itself is a natural process through light, sound, vibration and communication which creates an ecosystem. This is known as sonoluminescence, the voices of the heavens. These stars and chemical reactions are also found within the functions of the human body through the firmament that we call our skin. The skin is the largest organ of the human body, it absorbs everything. Remember, you are what you eat. When a mother is pregnant carrying her baby, the motion of the skies, the alignment of the stars, the temperature of the moon and the earth and the sun all play a major role in developing the human body and soul. These are known as the 12 tribes of Israel in the Bible. Israel meaning Isis, Ra and El. These are also our 12 zodiac signs or horoscopes. The stars are for signs and seasons. While your parents DNA play the physical role to a certain extent, it's just like baking a cake. Adding ingredients actually comes from the elements of the stars above. The sun is the furnace and the end result is the firmament, the armor of God. Everything from a laugh, smile or tear has as much chemistry to it as making a coffee. The process of deoxidization caused by the flood in Genesis created a stone age, a new age of material, like a caveman discovering fire. The people who learned to master the alchemy or the stars ended up writing our history. Enter the Freemasons. For example, DMT is made of branches and plays a major role in Masonic rituals. Also, in the construction of Tower of Babel, they had to use the furnace to make bricks. Now we know the Masons love to hide truth in plain sight, and they didn't fail us when it comes to the Mimosa. Look here, in Horton here's a who. A Mimosa flower. And here, the teacher is a Mimosa flower. The Mimosa teaching us teaching us. Did Dr. Seuss know? I would imagine so. I'm sure he smoked DMT. Dr. Seuss also wrote the Lorax. And look what it has in common with Horton Hears a Who. Mimosa flowers. They made a cartoon movie out of this book as well. I am the lore axe. I speak for the trees. The tale of when the giant trees were cut until none were left, like today, with no giant trees. The lore, folklore, the story of the axe. And tell me those aren't mimosa flowers. Those are so mimosa flowers right there. And the bears and the Lorax symbolize the creatures that people see when they smoke DMT. This is a full on DMT experience in this picture. Now in that red Masonic book, it had the tree of life growing on the bed of the king and it looked like a mimosa tree. So our next question should be, do we have any connections with the mimosa tree and Lebanon? Followed by, was the tree of life in the center a mimosa tree, a DMT tree? So let's look. And they grow here in Hawaii like weeds, but way more beautiful. So I did some searching and found that the mimosa tree is called the sunt or sunt tree in the region of Phoenicia and is a shittim wood in the Bible. 
So I did find it in the area of Lebanon and Israel. And that it grows prolifically on the east bank of the Dead Sea, with Qumran just across on the west bank. Remember Qumran? The location of the Dead Sea Scrolls in a cave that looks like a giant tree cut? So the acacia wood is the mimosa wood. And I look to see if the cedar is connected to the acacia and if there is a genus that is mimosa. And look what I found. There is. So does this mean that the ringing cedars, the giant cedars cut, were mimosa cedars and not the traditional cedars depicted in the Lebanese flag? And guess what the national flower of Australia is? The golden wattle or cedar. The golden wattle with mimosa flowers in yellow. Notice how it looks just like a yellow version of the mimosa. See, even the little leaves look like the mimosa. And that's why the thistle is the official flower for Scotland, because it looks like the mimosa as well, although it is not mimicking mimosa. Truth hidden in plain sight. They worship this plant and make it their national flowers. I found this interesting. In the Philippines, it lists the acacia, A-K-A-S-Y-A, as a medicinal plant. Acacia is phonetically the same as acacia, A-C-A-C-I-A. Notice too, acacia looks very similar to ayahuasca, A-Y-A-H-U-A-S-C-A. Ayahuasca would be a form of DMT, but with added ingredients to extend the experience. Notice Mimosa on the list as well, Mimosa Saman. So we can see here the Acacia, the Acacia, Ayahuasca, DMT, and Mimosa are all connected. And it's listed under medicinal plant, right? So it actually helps people. There is even a chocolate mimosa. Now tell me that ain't pretty. Wow. And the Japanese have a bonsai version. Also, I did a search on DMT and Masons. And it looks like the higher degrees, remember the higher degrees, the red book? use DMT in their ceremonies. From the Reality Sandwich article, in their daring book, Mushrooms, Myth, and Mithras, author Ruck, Hoffman, and Seldron made a bold attempt to interpret the founding myth of Freemasonry in an ethiobotanical context. Seeing in the allegory of Grand Master Hiram Abiff's raising a possible allusion to a ritualized harvest of acacia root. The murdered body of Hiram Abiff, a master mason and master of works on Solomon's temple, was raised from his resting place beneath an acacia sprig, which marked the spot to those who would be sent by King Solomon to search. After the interred corpse of Hiram was found, Solomon himself went to the site to recover the body. Feeling beneath the ground at the site of the acacia, the king felt Hiram's hand. In the process of recovering his corpse, he first used the grip of the entered apprentice, then that of the fellow craft but twice felt the skin slipping off Hiram's hand. Finally, Solomon used the grip of the master mason to raise the corpse. 
in the ethiobotanical context, we feel that this myth is a description of a ritualized acacia harvest. We note that the subterranean root bark of acacia and mimosa species are known to contain high levels of dimethyltryptamine, an ethiogen which is strongly psychoactive when extracted and inhaled and which is easily combined with other sacred ethiogenic plants and consumed as a potion. Now let's go back to our image of the king lying in the bed with the tree upon it from the Red Masonic Book. Remember the Red Book is a great work, a book of occulted knowledge. And so makes sense the author would include dream interpretations from the Bible, from the book of Daniel. We know it's in reference to Daniel because the picture looks so similar to this 15th century painting from France of King Nebuchadnezzar's dream of a tree. It speaks of a giant tree. Daniel 4. These are the visions I saw while lying in bed. I looked, and therefore before me stood a tree in the middle of the land. Its height was enormous. The tree grew large and strong, and its top touched the sky. It was visible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all. Under it the wild animals found shelter, and the birds lived in its branches, from every creature was fed. In the visions I saw while lying in bed, I looked, and there before me was a holy one, a messenger, coming down from heaven. He called in a loud voice, Cut down the tree and trim off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under it and the birds from its branches, but let the stump and its roots bound with iron and bronze, remain in the ground, in the grass of the field. Is this El Arez, the giant cedar of Lebanon, symbolic of the tree of life at the center of our world? Notice all the animals lived in the giant tree. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven, and let him live with the animals among the plants of the earth. Let his mind be changed from that of a man, and let him be given the mind of an animal, till seven times pass by for him. Does that mean we forgot? We're just remembering now? The decision is announced by messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict, so that the living may know that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth, and gives them to anyone he wishes, and sets over them the lowliest of people. Daniel interprets the dream. Your Majesty, you are that tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to distant parts of the earth. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox and be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass by you for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes. The command to leave the stump of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven rules. Therefore, your majesty, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that then your prosperity will continue. Your kingdom will be restored by doing what is right and renouncing your wickedness. Crowley, Alistair Crowley, was known as the wickedest man alive. What does that make his followers? Followers of the left-hand path. Will they renounce their wickedness? Do what is right. And there is another peacock in the tree. Genesis 4 
Cain and Abel. Where did Cain bury Abel? Looking at Baalbek and the following regions from a Google Maps satellite, it looks like a well dug up grave. It also looks like Baalbek might be the chest or the skull. You can easily make out the ribcage and a full spine with legs. The old skeleton bones even make up the roads. But Albek is located on the opposite side of the Valley of the Holy Saints and close to the Syrian border. The only thing separating the Weda Anubin and Baalbek is the giant mountain or Al Aras, which we are now learning used to be a giant tree. Like the Bible says, Cain worked in the soil while Abel worked the sheep. When looking at an aerial view of the Baalbek temple, it looks like a man walking his sheep. So when and why was it all done? The Maronite Christians, who for generations deemed themselves custodians of the site, told legends of the giants who had built the colossal platform. According to an Arabic manuscript found at Baalbek, Nimrod sent giants to rebuild it after the flood, whilst another tale relates that Nimrod rebelled against his god and built the Tower of Babel. Other legends associate Baalbek with the biblical figure of Cain, the son of Adam, claiming that he built it as a refuge after his god Yahweh had cursed him. According to the Maronite Patriarch of Lebanon, Estefan Dwehi, tradition states that the fortress of Baalbek is the most ancient building in the world. Cain, the son of Adam, built it in the year 133 of creation. During a fit of raving madness, he gave it the name of his son Enoch and peopled it with giants who were punished for their iniquities by the flood. The local Muslims also believed that it was beyond the capability of humans to move the enormous stones of Baalbek. Could the temples of Baalbek be the shrine that Cain built for Abel? They are conveniently located under the giant tree. Or did Nimrod come here and continue to build Babel after the flood, like the Maronite faith and the Bible strongly suggests? Or could it be where Freemasonry all began? The Masonic books that I had a look at while in Lebanon specifically focused on the books of Ezekiel, Daniel, Nehemiah, Nimrod and Babel. Or did God take the giant trees and store them at Antarctica as written in Job for times of trouble and war. The book of Job chapter 33 verse 22 clearly states, Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or has thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? So if you made it this far, we really want to thank you for watching the Ancient Tree Research Project, Giant Cedars of Lebanon. If you are new to this idea, then watch a video called No Forests on Flat Earth. It's the video that changed everything when it came out in 2016. Also, Rosette has a playlist of her own videos called There Are No Forests, Decoded. Be sure to check that out. I completely understand that this sounds crazy, and even I wanted nothing to do with it when it first came up. But the more you look into it, the realer it gets. It becomes quite clear that we are merely living in the aftermath of what used to be, and even the smaller version of trees that we see today are being wiped out with no problem. If the money-hungry corporations don't handle it, then things like chemtrails will. They are rapidly destroying our environment while the politicians yell global warming and blame you. It's just sad, really, and at times it seems that there's nothing you can do, but there is something that you can do. While you are here, you can be your best and treat yourself, your friends, your family, and your surroundings with respect. You can make others aware that are around you so that they can make better choices for themselves. Sharing is caring. The fact is, whatever is happening here on Earth is something that is meant to play out a certain way. This is why there are so many synchronicities. This is why the Bible contains so much truth and prophesizes what's going on in the world today. We seem to be trapped in an endless cycle and we always will be unless we get it right and we far from have it right this time around. 
the messed up thing is that the world is only going to get worse unless you decide to make a change. Every individual counts in the whole. So start being a better person today and quit letting the psychopaths that use money to enslave you control your mind and what you think.